Good morning, everyone. I welcome you to church today. Why don't we just stand wherever we're at in this place and in your home, in our homes, and let's just lift our voices to the Lord today. Amen. God is good. Amen. Lord, I thank you, Jesus, that we can come to our houses, Lord God, today, not to your house, God. But Lord, you're not limited by location, Jesus. And Lord, we know that you are in our home. And Lord, you're in everyone else's home today, Lord God. And I pray right now, Jesus, that you would meet with us, Lord God, in our homes. Lord, that you would meet with us, Lord God, where we're at, Lord God, that you would meet with us, Lord Jesus, in our lounge rooms, our across our kitchen tables, Lord Jesus. Lord, that you would speak to us today, Lord, as we spend some time in worship, as we spend some time in praise, Lord God, and I pray that as we open your word, that you would speak to the church. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. 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 Welcome you all to church. This is a bit different, as we would normally do it on a Sunday, but we believe that God is going to have his way in this place. We believe that God is going to meet you in your homes as you worship Him in spirit and in truth. Um, we're going to do worship like we would normally do. So let's stand. Let's stand to our feet. Let's just clap our hands, lift our hands, worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness today as we sing this song, Blessed Be Your Name. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Blessed be your name. Every blessing, every blessing. 
before us, God. Thank you, Jesus, for this day and today. Hallelujah, 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 Jesus. Hallelujah, God. You are on our side, Jesus. You are on our side, God. When the enemy comes in like a flood, God, you are there to lift up a standard, God, for us. We thank you today, God, that when you call out to you in that time of trouble, in that time of need, and you are there, Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. We bless your name, Jesus. We bless your name, God. Hallelujah. He is a good God. He loves his people. He loves his church. Praise God. Praise God. Amen. Amen. You may be seated for a minute. We're going to do some announcements. This Tuesday at 10 a.m. will be ladies' prayer. As with most of our prayer at the moment, we're doing that online. So that will be done via Zoom. Ladies, keep a lookout for a link via your text, via text message on earlier on Tuesday, so be ready for that, and make sure that uh, you click on and spend some time in prayer. We need to be praying right now as a church. Yeah. Amen. Wednesday at 7.30, we'll have, been, we'll have a full church, 7 o'clock on Wednesday, we'll be having full church prayer. Um, we did that this last Wednesday, gone via Zoom, um, and it was really good. We felt the presence of the Lord in our home, and I'm sure you did in your home, so let's gather together on Wednesday at 7 o'clock. Um, I'll leave it up to our youth leader and hyphen leaders to contact our respective hyphen and youth groups regarding any activities coming up. But I suspect they'll all be done via Zoom. So young people, just download Zoom onto your devices. Make sure you're ready for anything that happens there. Praise the Lord. I want to just remind everyone that even though we're not gathered together as a church, the church still needs to go on. And we need to do that. There are people that have lost their jobs in our church. We need to help them. And we can only do that if you continue to give as a church. The church is called to be there for a reason. Yeah. We might not be able to gather together today, but the church's mission still goes on. Yeah. We need to help those who need help. And the only way we can do that is if you guys continue to give. And I thank you for that yeah. today. Praise God. Let's continue and go into worship now. The beautiful song that we sing in our church is called Waymaker. He is our waymaker. He makes a way when there is no way. And I'm so thankful that we know his name, and his name is Jesus. Praise God. Waymaker. You are here, moving in our midst, moving in our midst. I worship you. I worship you. You are Yes, God. 
Well, if his goodness is running after me, maybe we just need to slow down a little bit. Let him, let his goodness catch up. Let his goodness catch, catch up with us. Because he is a good God and he has good things in store for his church today. Amen, amen. I was so blessed this Wednesday just gone that we were able to connect together via Zoom to have a prayer meeting as a church. Yes. After we felt the presence of the Lord at this home, and I know many of you felt it in your homes too. God is not limited by geography like I've told you many times. Yes. He's omnipresent. He's everywhere all the time. He's here today. Yes. He's in your home today as well. Amen, amen. You know, the church isn't bricks and mortar. The church isn't a platform or a pulpit. The church isn't a projector or beautiful sound or instruments. You are the church. We are the church. We are the body of Christ. And together we have a part to play in this season. Yes. So this morning I wanted to talk about, is there room in your house? Now I know and I understand that maybe we're not allowed to have people in our homes. But let's just walk down this thought about, is there room in your house today? We have questions. I've got questions. How long is this going to go on for? How bad will it get? Will they find a cure? How will business survive? How much longer do we need to confine ourselves to our homes? What about our church? All good questions. And this morning, my sermon is a question. Is there room in your house? Lord, I thank you that we can be in your house, in our homes, Lord God, today. And Lord, your presence is here. You have already met with us with the beautiful presence in this home, God. We thank you for that, Jesus. Lord, help us through your word understand that through this season there is a plan and a purpose for your church. Yes. Help me, Lord God, as, this, as I speak, anoint my lips. Yes. Give us listening ears and hearts to what you would say. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Is there room in your house? The church continues to move on, even though we might be limited by, where, by being able to gather together today. But the church continues to move on. Yes. The church continues to grow from strength to strength. I'm comforted in the fact that Jesus said in the New Testament that the gates of hell shall not prevail against the church. Yes. And I'm convinced today, yes, we are not meeting together in a building. We're in different homes. But today we have one church, but we have many locations. Yes, we do. They might try and shut down churches because of this disease. And, and we can question and ask about why, why, why. Luckily, God won't give us an answer. He hasn't told me why. I'd love to know. But God is doing something. We have one church in many locations. If everyone in our church family logged on today, we would have one church in 65 different locations. Yes. That is amazing. Who would have ever thought we would have 65 preaching points in 2020? But God is good and God is doing something. God has a purpose in this season. It's almost like he's taking the church back to basics. We're not allowed to meet, We're not allowed to meet together in beautiful buildings spend time together, it's like he's taken the church back to basics. And what do I mean by back to basics? In the New Testament, after the book of Acts, there was no church building. They didn't meet in beautiful facades with beautiful instruments and bands and beautiful singers and brothers and sisters together. They met in their homes. Yes. They went from house to house. And that's why this morning I'm talking about, is there room in your house? Romans 16 and 5 says, Likewise, greet the church. That is in your house. And today I'll bring greetings to the church that is in your house. Your church is your home today. Your home is your church today. Yes. Amen. In the New Testament, they met house to house. When we look at Luke 24, 46 to 49, and it says, And he said unto them, Thus it is written, and thus it was necessary for Christ to suffer and to rise from the dead the third day, and that repentance and remission of sins should be preached in his name to all nations, beginning in Jerusalem. Verse 48 says, And you are witnesses of these things. Behold, I send the promise of my Father upon you, but tarry in the city of Jerusalem until you are endured with power from on high. Yes. So Jesus said, Go to Jerusalem. He told his disciples, Go to Jerusalem and wait for the promise of the Father. They went to this place called the Upper Room. Now that wasn't a hotel. That wasn't a conference venue. That wasn't a big hall. In New, Test in New Testament times in Jerusalem, a lot of people had what was called an upper room. This upper room was used to put people that would visit. This upper room was used to keep people that were sick away from the rest of the household. This upper room was used. It was a room that was amazing in these houses because miraculous things happened in their upper room. In the upper room, we read about the Holy Ghost being poured out in the upper room. Is there room in your house for the Holy Ghost to be yes. poured out? 
Is there room in your home for the Spirit of the Lord to move? Is there room in your house? It seems that in the upper room there were many, many miraculous things that took place. I'm reminded of Tabitha. Tabitha, Acts chapter 9, let's turn to Acts chapter 9, 39 and 40. As you turn there, I'm going to need a quick drink of water. Acts chapter 9, 39 to 40. Then Peter arose and went with them. When he had come, they brought him to the upper room. And all the widows stood by him weeping, showing their tunics and garments which Dorcas had made while she was with them. But Peter put them all out and knelt down and prayed. See, Tabitha had died. All the widows were there. They were mourning. They were sad. They'd moved Tabitha to the upper room because it appeared that's where, that's where they took people who were sick or they had to pass away. They'd moved them outside of the home into the upper room. And Peter comes in this day. He sees all the mourning, all the sadness, all, all the all the you know the the paraphernalia for funerals because because Tabitha had died. But Peter puts them all out and he kneels down and prays and turns to Tabitha in verse forty and says, "Tabitha, arise." And she opened her eyes and when she saw Peter, she sat up. Yes. Miracles can happen in our homes. Right. This day there was sadness, there was mourning, there was death in the upper room of this house. Peter came to this house. And Tabitha was laid out there in her upper room. She was dead. But Peter said, Tabitha, get up. It's time to get up. It's time to arise. And a miraculous thing happened in that home. Miracles can happen in your home. Yes. Miracles can happen where you are right now. We don't need a church building for miracles. In the Old Testament, uh, sorry, in the New Testament, they went house to house and miracles happened. Things happened from house to house. Yes. And this is not different today. We are in our home, but we need to believe that miracles can still happen in our home. Mm -hmm. Tabitha was raised from the dead in her upper room in her home. The Holy Ghost was poured out on the day of Pentecost in the upper room yes. in someone's home. Acts 20 and 8 says, this is an interesting one. Acts 20 and 8 says, they were, there were many lamps in the upper room and they were gathered together. Now, Paul is preaching here. Today... I'm not going to preach like Paul. I'm not going to preach for hours and hours. But we know this story here. If you know Acts chapter 20, he's, he's there preaching in the upper room. And he preaches so long that this young man that's sitting on the windowsill falls asleep. He falls three stories down and he dies. What a terrible tragedy. Could you imagine for someone to preach that long? And Paul's preaching would not have been boring. I'm convinced it wouldn't have been boring because if you know his story, He's come from a, and we'll get to that in a minute, he's come from a place of persecuting Christians yeah. and now he's preaching to Christians to see them be converted. But this poor young man, maybe he was 12 years old or 10 years old, you know, he was a young man and he just couldn't keep his eyes open. His eyelids were getting heavier. He falls asleep and he falls out this window. He's dead. Everyone's like gathering around. What has happened? He's fallen out the window. He's dead. And Paul rushes out. He embraces Eutychus, this young man that is dead. And he says to the crowd, don't worry, he is still alive. Don't worry, life is still in him. After they broke, so Paul says this, he gives Eutychus a hug, he carries him up. What does he do? He goes about, just goes and breaks bread, eats and talks for a while. In fact, they talked so long that the morning came up. It doesn't appear that they actually slept at all. Paul just kept talking and talking. You know, our old pastor, Brother Hogan, would say, if you can't say it in 30 minutes, you shouldn't be saying it at all. Um, Paul talked all night, so much so that someone fell out the window and died. But this young man came alive. This young man came alive in the upper room in someone's home. In your home, miracles can happen. In your homes, something can be birthed. In your homes, the dead can be raised. In your home, spiritually dead can come to life. In your homes, you can have healing. In your homes, you can have restoration. In your homes, you can have freedom. In your home, there is no where there is no distraction and noise. You can meet with the Lord on a one-to-one -one basis. Yes, it's important to meet together face-to-face. -face, and I miss you today because we don't see you. But the, and the Bible says to not forsake that, to not forsake the assembling together. And there will come a time where we can see each other again. Yeah. There will come a time where we can walk through those gates at our church and meet together again. But right now, the church is your home. 
Your home is the church and God is not limited by location. And healings can happen in your home. Restoration and salvation and freedom can happen in your home. The spiritually dead can come to life in your home. I'm so thankful that God is not limited by geography. He is everywhere, anywhere. He is there. you just got to call on his name. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. Amen. So we're in our houses for now. In the book of Acts, the Holy Ghost was poured out on the day of Pentecost. They were all gathered together in one place, in one accord. That means they were united. They were united. They were together. This morning, even where you are, where you are, you can receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Yeah. It's simple. You know, we don't need a PhD in the Holy Ghost. We don't need to write a master, a thesis in the Holy Ghost on how to receive it. It's simple to receive the Holy Ghost. First, we start with repentance. Yeah. God, I'm sorry. I'm sorry for all of those wrongs, wrong that I've done in my life. God, I'm going to turn away from that sinful nature and I'm going to turn towards you. Jesus, forgive me. Jesus, forgive me. And once you've done that, you can be assured that he's forgiven you. And then we just start with worship. Just worship him for his goodness. Worship him because he has forgiven you. Worship him because he's allowed you to turn away from that wickedness and turn towards him. And before long, the Holy Ghost will fall. You'll begin to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gives utterance. And if that happens to you today in your home, and I believe it can, yeah. call on your pastor for you will then need to be baptized in Jesus' name if you're yeah. not. Because that is what the Bible says. We need to be baptized in the name of the one who died for us, the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of our sin. Praise God. Praise God. So you can have a miracle in your home. You can receive the Holy Ghost in your home. Ministries can be birthed in your home. After the day of Pentecost, we read in Acts 5.42, and it says, And daily in the temple and in every house they did not cease teaching and preaching Jesus as the Christ. In their houses. In their houses. The church has been closed for a season. Maybe God is saying, Guys, get back to basics. Get back to your house. Do what is necessary in your homes. Men, lead your families in your homes. Let me tell you a story about in their house. When I ask the question, is there room in your house? It's about, a, it's about a man whose name was Saul. He was well respected. He was rich. And he was feared by the Christians. He comes onto the scene in Acts chapter 8. You see, in Acts chapter 7, Stephen had just been stoned. And we find out in Acts chapter 8 that Saul was actually consenting, approving of his death. His job was easy. His job was this. To make havoc of the church, enter into every house, and drag off men and women and commit them into prison. That was Saul's job. It would have been easy because the church was exuberant. The church was out there. The church knew how to worship. The church had an experience that couldn't be denied with the gift of the Holy Ghost. So Saul had a job. He had to make havoc of the church. He went into everyone's house, dragged men and women off, and threw them into prison. They were persecuted for what they believed. If you were a Christian, you were dragged into prison. You were likely put into an arena, possibly thrown to the lions to be to have as meals for them. You died a very excruciating and painful death. If you were a Christian, you were on his hit list. Yeah. He came for you. He wanted to come for you. He wanted you dead. He wanted you thrown into prison. He had no greater pleasure than seeing Christians, Christians bound up and thrown in jail. But as Saul persecutes the church, the church scatters. The church goes, goes away. Philip goes to Samaria, and we read on an Acts, there's great joy in Samaria. People are baptized and healed. Yeah. And Peter and John hear about this, and they go to Samaria, and the, the Samaritans receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. You cannot stop the church. That's right. This season that we're going through will not stop the church. The church will be stronger for it. Yeah. Ministries will be birthed when we go house to house. So Saul is persecuting the church. The church scatters, but no one can stop the church. So we read on in Acts chapter 9, Paul is on his way to Damascus. He has got letters on the way that if he finds anyone in Damascus that are Christians, he would bind them up and take them back to, back to Jerusalem and throw them in jail, kill them, etc., etc., etc. Acts 9, 1 and 2 says, Then Saul, still breathing threatenings and murder against the disciples of the Lord, went to the high priest and asked letters for him to the synagogues of Damascus. So that if he found any who were in the way, whether men or women, he might bring them down to Jerusalem. 
So Saul has been given permission by the high priest to go to Damascus, find any Christians there, bring them back bound. As he journeyed, verse 3, as we go on in Acts chapter 9, he came near to Damascus and suddenly a light shone around him from heaven. And then he fell to the ground and heard a voice saying, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? And he said, who are you, Lord? And the response came, and the Lord said, I am Jesus whom you are persecuting. Remember, ministries can be birthed in your home today. If you have a call of God in your life, it can happen today. That call can be fulfilled in your home. Whether you're a man, a woman, a young person, a child, God is no respecter of persons. So Jesus tells Saul, my name is Jesus. You are persecuting me. And Saul is blinded. He's scared. He's trembling. Sounds a bit like the world at the moment, doesn't it? Everyone's scared. Everyone's trembling. They're scared. They're panic buying. People are panic buying. They're fearful. They're stressed. And they're asking, the, They're asking, what do we do now? Acts 9 and 6 says, So he trembling and astonished said, Lord, what do you want me to do? Then the Lord said to him, Arise, go into the city, and you will be told what you must do. So Saul gets up. He's helped by his friends and who are scared because they can hear this voice and can't see anything. Um, and goes into the city of Damascus. And he goes to the house of one called Judas. Now remember, amazing things can happen in our house if we have room in our house. So he's gone to this house. His friends have helped him to the house of Judas. And he is worried. He's so worried he's fallen to his knees in prayer. And there's this man in the city called Ananias. He's just going about his business and he sees a vision from the Lord. And he hears God call out and his response should be the same as we should have today. Acts 9 and 10. Now there was a certain disciple at Damascus named Ananias. And to him the Lord said in a vision, Ananias. And he said, here am I, Lord. Through this crisis, through this tragedy, through this season we are going through, we must always listen to the voice of God. Yeah. Here God is speaking to Ananias and his response is, Here am I, Lord. God is going to speak to his church. He's going to speak to you. And our answer should be, Here am I, Lord. Yeah. Here am I, Lord. God is going to use this church in a different way over the next season. And we need to be ready. When you're praying and God calls your voice and you answer his voice, you might want to sit down. If he's going to tell you when he tells you what to do, you might want to sit down because Ananias responds to the Lord and says, here am I, Lord. Here's Ananias being obedient to the voice of the God, the Lord. And this is what he hears in Acts 9 and 11. So the Lord said to him, arise and go to the street that is called Straight and inquire of the house of Judas for one called Saul of Tarsus. For behold, he is praying. Wow. Wow, Saul of Tarsus? I'm sure Ananias knew this name. I'm sure Ananias knew his reputation. I'm sure Ananias knew what was going on. I'm sure that he knew this name, Saul of Tarsus. Yeah. Wow. And that's what I said. Sometimes when you answer the voice of the Lord and you say, Lord, here am I, you might want to sit down when you hear what he's going to say to you. I'm sure Ananias is blown off his feet when he says, when he's told to go to this street called Straight, go to Judas's home, and Saul of Tarsus is there. He's praying. Go and see him. Wow. Verse 13. Then Ananias answered, Lord, I have heard from many about this man, how much harm he has done to your saints. And here he has authority from the chief priests to bind all who call on your name. You mean Saul, the one who's persecuting us? You mean the one who's sending them bound to Jerusalem? You mean the one who's consenting to their death? That's Saul? The killer of Christians? No way. There is no hope for him. No way. We may have the same feelings towards the people in the world. We may have the same feelings to our families, our backslidden families. We may think, who them? Never. Who them? God will never touch them. But God gives Ananias an answer in verses 15 and 16. But the Lord said to him, that is to Ananias, Go, for he is a chosen vessel of mine. To bear my name before the Gentiles, kings, and the children of Israel. For I will show you how many things he must suffer for my name's sake. Mm. Go to the house of Judas. Go to that house. See Saul, for he is a chosen vessel. Church ministries can be birthed in your house. Mm. 
You are a chosen vessel. You are a royal priesthood. Through this season we are going through as a church, as a nation, as a world, God is going to do amazing things. He's going to do amazing things. Through this time where we meet house to house, there will be those that hate church and may never step into a church. They may even be your family members that will have questions. Mm. They will be in your homes and they will be asking questions. What is happening? What is going on? Is there going to be a cure? What will happen to my job and my business? What will happen to the things that I do? As we meet from house to house, God can minister. There may be family members. There may be neighbors. There may be the Lord is calling people back to himself. Yeah. Like I said, they may never step into a church. But the church is being mobilized today. The church is in 65 homes if you've all logged in today. The church is out there and the church is unstoppable. We can still be the church in our homes. So you see from that moment where Ananias comes to Brutus' house and embraces Saul, brother Saul. He calls him brother Saul. You read the New Testament, two-thirds of it's written by brother Saul, who we know as Paul. You can never underestimate the workings of the Lord in your house. Is there room in your house? And then the Bible talks about, and it's, it's one of my favorite parables. There's three of them in this one in Luke chapter 15. And it talks about the parable of the prodigal son. You know, this father has two sons and it's a story. It's an illustration. The father has two sons and the younger of the two sons says, dad, give me my inheritance. I want to go out there and do my own thing. Like I've told you many times, this was allowed under Jewish law. They were allowed to ask for their inheritance early. But that youngest son was literally saying to dad, dad, you are dead to me. I want my money. I'm out of here. So he does that. The story goes on. He says, the father gives him his inheritance and off he goes. And he, so he, he wastes it. He wastes his inheritance with righteous living, with partying, you know, parties here, parties there. Um, and he's lost all his money. And just when you didn't think it could get bad, he's lost his money. There's a famine in the land. There's a famine in the land. Things go from bad to worse. Think about it in respect of where we are today, where we are as a society today. We think things can't get worse, and now there's a pandemic in the land. We have been scattered to our homes. So this young man now, he's got no job, he's got no money, so he he goes and gets himself a job. At least he's got that. He's able to get himself a job. He's eating the food of the pigs. Mm. The young Jewish boy doesn't do this. Right. He's eating the food from the pigs. Anyway, he remembers his house. He remembers the home of his father. And his dad says, and he remembers, hang on, my dad's servants are so well fed. My dad's servants have got food. My dad's servants have everything they need. I'm going to go home to my dad. And I am going to say, Dad, make me a servant. I don't want to be a son. Make me a servant. And anyway, if you know the story, he comes home. And while he's far away away, his dad's standing there. We don't know. Maybe dad stands there every day waiting for his son. And from a distance, he sees the boy coming. And he runs and embraces him and kisses him. And And the son's got his story, Dad. I'm no longer worthy to be your son. I thought you said, and dad's like, no, no, stop. What are you talking about? My child, you were dead and now you are alive. You're lost and you are home again. Bring the car, put a ring on his finger, put a robe on him, restore him back to that place where he was going, where he belonged. And this happened in the house in the story. This happened in the home of this dad and his two sons. The prodigal came home to the house. Now today, we, the prodigals, prodigals cannot come to our church buildings right now, but they are your sons and your daughters. They are your brothers and your sisters. Make room in your house for them. For there is rejoicing in heaven over one sinner that repents, the 99 that need no repentance. Church, let us be like the Father and welcome our prodigals back home. Let's make room in our houses for victory. Let's make room in our houses for healing and restoration and salvation. Let's make room in our houses for the outpouring of the Holy Ghost. Let's make room in our houses for God's ministry to be birthed in someone's life. God is going to use this season for his glory. And when we can gather together again, oh, what a party we will have. 
What a time we will have when we can gather together again with our brothers and sisters. But I'm thankful that through this season, God has given me a message for the church. We can be the church in our homes. Make room for him in our homes. Make room for the Lord in our homes. He can still move in our homes. Read your Bible. Pray. Spend time with the Lord. This is the time for the church to get ready for that revival he has promised. This is the moment. This is not a time to pause. I saw a preacher from America say, we are not pausing at this moment. It's time for the church to reset. It is time for a change. We need to lift our voices together and say, God, you are doing something through this season. And Lord, help us be ready for that end time revival that you have promised. The Lord will help us through this time. The Lord will help us through this time. We must have faith in him. Stand with me in your homes. We don't need music. I think we'll just spend some time in prayer. Let's lift our voices to him, church. Wherever we're at, Lord, I thank you, Jesus. Lord, that you have the season in your control, God. It's in your hands, Jesus. Come on, church. Let's just lift our voice to him. Let's just worship him right now. It doesn't matter. No one can see you. You're in your home, maybe by yourself or with your family. No one can see you. Just lift your hands to him. Lord, you are in control of this season. God, we know that you have a plan through this, Lord God. Lord, help us go back to basics, Jesus. Lord, help us go back to that basics of life, Lord Jesus, where we can spend time with you. You are causing, calling the church, Lord God, to not be busy. You are calling us to reset, Lord God, and prepare for that revival that you have promised. Lord, through this season, God, we thank you for the things that you are going to do. Lord, through this season, we thank you, Lord, for the lives that are going to be healed and restored and saved. We thank you, Lord, for the prodigals that are going to come home, Lord Jesus, through this season. We thank you for your promises, Lord God. You are not a man that you should lie, God. Lord, today we worship you, God, for you are good. You are good, Lord, and your mercies endure to all generations, Lord. Help us, God, be the church in this time. Help us, Lord God, to reach out, Lord God. Lord, it might not be face-to-face, Lord God. It might not be face-to-face, Jesus, but it might be, Lord God, through the phone, through online, Jesus. But help us reach out to someone. We need you, Jesus, but the world needs you more. Lord, I pray, God, that you would bless us through this week. Lord, as we gather together to pray, ladies prayer on Tuesday for our ladies, church prayer on Wednesday. Lord, that you would meet with us again. Lord, we thank you for your promise, Lord God, a few months ago that you said that when we pray, we have your ear. And Lord, right now, together as a church, we lift our voices to you, God, and we pray for this pandemic, Jesus. Lord, we understand we are going through a season, Lord God. But Lord, I pray, Lord God, that you would come against it. Lord, your word says in Psalms 91, Lord God, that the plague will not harm us. Lord, the plague will not hurt us, Lord God. Lord God, but right now we cry out for our world, Jesus. We cry out for our nation, Lord God. Lord, they need you, Jesus. Lord, show yourself to be mighty and strong through this, Lord God. Show yourself to be, Lord God, the God of all gods through this situation, Jesus. Lord, bring victory, Lord God. Lord, push back this virus, Lord God. Touch the lives, touch the hearts. Heal, Lord God, today. Lord, bless us this week, Lord God. Lord, protect us, Lord God. Keep your hand upon each and every one in this church. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. God bless you, church. Pray that you have a good week. Pick up the phone and talk to someone. Talk to one of your brothers, to your sisters. Spend some time together. And may God bless you today. Thank you for tuning in. We'll see you soon. God bless you. Mouth food. <laughs> Green face.
87 years after the supply was first created. Mm-hmm. Anyway. 87 years? Mm-hmm. Right. It's a stock if you're 32 years old. <laughs> <laughs> Poor old girl. <laughs> Did you not hear me closing the bread? <laughs> Thanks, baby. Grandma. Oh, lovely grandma. <laughs> um, and you know how many? And when I, but I talked to Ashley. 